Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bucks UK TV. It's episode 69, no smirking at the back. Uh, we are joined by Tampa sports legend, Rock Riley. Thank you for joining us. Gentlemen, how are you? We're good, We're thank great. you. We're good. Great, thanks. Great. Now, some of you will definitely know Rock from, you know, WDLA, WFLA. Um, some of you maybe from when Phil and David uh, went on his show. Others of you may not. So maybe, Rock, let's start from the beginning. Tell us about when you were just a pebble. And, um, you know, you started, you know, up in the northern climes of Jersey and how you ended up doing what you're doing and how you ended up in Florida. Yeah, it really is crazy, man. I, I, I got in the business when I was in New Jersey. Uh, I was in radio up there for five years. Then I went to my first TV gig in upstate New York, an NBC affiliate. And then at the time, uh, I had just got married. My wife had cancer. I had to leave the gig. She did not make it. And I didn't think that I'd even ever get back into the business. But that was a long, long time ago. I got back in. I worked at New Jersey Network TV, then FNN, which was financial news network but it was fnn sports on weekends i was a national tv reporter and then uh, and then i got a job in tampa in radio and i thought that it would just be here for a short time and here it is 26 seven years later i haven't left i was a sports director at a regional 24 hours bay news nine for 18 years did radio like you said wdae uh, now I have several podcasts, Tampa Free Press, so I'm still out in the field covering the Bucks daily, the Lightning, and the Tampa Bay Rays, and anything that big that happens here. Fantastic, thank you. And um, there's the, the adage isn't there that um, you've got the face for radio, so it's really nice that we can uh, actually get to see you today and disprove <laughs> that. So um, yeah, you've touched on everything uh, in overview, and we thought we'd just um, just pick through some of those bones so people can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, Phil, I think you're first. Hi, Rock. Good to see you again. After Back the... at you, Phil. Yeah, right. last last time I saw you was in the hotel, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it was. So tell me, what, what, tell us, what have you been up to recently? What have you been up to now? Well, once, I mean, it's all Buccaneers. I covered the Tampa Bay Lightning with their Stanley Cup run. I was at Amelie Arena when the Colorado Avalanche won, you know, the Stanley Cup. And it was one of those things where it was, you know, the Lightning are so used to winning back to back. And like, it was almost mm -hmm. like it hit them reality. They're no longer champions. And I was done with all my work. I was walking out of Amelie Arena and I saw the door where you go to the ice and I'm like, I wonder if I should just go on the ice right now. The Stanley Cup, they're out there with their families and, and, the, and the commissioner and everybody is celebrating. And I went through and the guy, yeah, he's good. And all of a sudden I was on the ice and it was so surreal wow. when you're there to see a team that works so hard and they actually win it. So once the Lightning were done, I have been covering baseball with the Tampa Bay Rays, but couldn't wait for the Buccaneers. And with so much interest and with Brady, so during mini camp, OTAs, I was at the Bucks, and then training camp, and here we are. Because, I mean, the, the interest with the Buccaneers and the NFL is just so far above. The first joint practice, when it was the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they had 84 credentials for media. They had, no, no, I'm sorry, for the first practice. <laughs> Then the Miami Dolphins came in, and I think it was like 116 media that were there. NFL Network had their set, ESPN, national reporters were in. So I'm all in with the Buccaneers because the interest is just so big right now. Yeah. It must be great after all the COVID years to actually get a lot closer to training now and be involved. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it, it was actually surreal for me for the first game. But just to, just to let you know, like for training camp, they have a section, a tent set up where they bring over Todd Bowles. They will bring you a couple of the star players each day. But they're also like, okay, and you can just go on the field and you can get whoever you want. And it's like, really? Because we, have, we haven't been able to do that in three years. You know, with mm -hmm. the mass so far away, we were tested last year every single week. I was tested probably like, I don't know, 47 times. Uh, just to, and you couldn't even get near anybody. It was like, wow, wow. And then when it came time for game day, 
the first preseason game, we we're asking around, do you think we're going to be allowed in the locker room? I don't know. And here it is. Boom. The locker room was open. You go in there. You're like, whoa, there's like 90 some players here. They all have their, they're doubling up and they have lockers in the middle of the room. And it, and it was like, I never thought that I would actually be back in the locker room. So it's wide open and it's almost surreal. I mean, how long did it actually take you to get with Tom Brady after he joined the Bucks? Oh, uh, oh, 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 to actually, well, actually, actually, remember now, Brady was not, he was not here for the first preseason game. Yeah. And so last year when he would come and do the media thing, it was outside. And then we got to, you know, you see him, you're probably about 10 feet away. It's in a, a media session. So you can ask a question and you can watch, but we have not, I still really haven't seen him in the locker room yet. Now that's changed because now, you know, now he's back. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. And I, I mean, yeah, I mean, was there any doubt he wasn't coming back? Well, yeah, you know, I, I gotta say, I mean, he did retire. He retired once. And since they were so vague, okay. And that was strange because I started thinking about the Gronk situation and everybody kept saying, oh, he's definitely going to come back. He was in this uh, barber shop in Tampa. I don't know if you had seen that. And there was a guy there with his phone. He was like, oh, I'm just going to make Tom wait. You know, he made me wait, wait. And, and he's in great shape. But the days kept going on. And the longer it goes, you start thinking, hmm, hmm. So I think the second time when Todd Bowles says, it's going to be sometime after Tennessee. I don't have a date yet. And there had been no paparazzi shots. There was nothing. Usually you see Brady working out. He stayed off of social media. He's got a social media team doing his branding. And then you start thinking, you know what? You know, the whole, the whole situation was so crazy where uh, head coach Bruce Arians at the time, you know, he's a head coach. We're at the NFL Combine. Trask and Gabbert and he's like oh yeah Trask and Gabbert and we said do you thinking about retiring no no I like building a team okay and then we go to the NFL uh, owners meetings in Palm Beach and we come we're waiting for uh, Arians and a representative of the Bucks came up he said he had to leave but we can't tell you why so you're not going to get him and it's like boy that's kind of strange and then all of a sudden Brady comes back and he, now I know he really does like giving his 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 peeps uh, Todd Bowles the gig I understand that but that was kind of strange where all of a sudden he's stepping down and then there's a press conference and then he's going in the ring of honor and then Brady shows up and it's like so honestly with the way things have been kind of going this year and it was going a little bit longer there was a little bit of a wonder if he's having second chances with the offensive line you just never know but boy, oh boy, it sure was good to see him show up yesterday and he was on like he had never left. So he's not the Mars singer then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's so funny about that? And it shows you now in social media. When that came down, I saw the girl that posted that and I didn't know who she was. And she was a younger girl. She was very pretty, you know, good at social media. She had it. And she even said, she goes, I don't, I, I, this isn't anything, but. I just think this would be great. I think that he, don't you think it's got to be the masked singer? It was a, it was a spoof and it just blew up so big, but it was hysterical. And then Brady actually responded today or yesterday and I wasn't the masked singer. And then he had his guy in underwear, you know, trying to sell his TV 12 stuff. Don't you, don't, don't you think that I, I've always, the one thing that's about Brady says he's come to Tampa, a few things that you, you see him so much closer than he did when he, when he was at New England. And one thing that came across for me, I wasn't surprised he went at all because he is a big, massive family man. And I'm wondering whether, you know, he's, you know, I, okay, I will come, come out of retirement. I'll come back for the books, but I want to spend some, I don't want to spend all this training camp doing this. I want to go back to my family. And I think that was a lot to do with it, you know. Because he, what has come across, and also he's got a wicked sense of humor as well. He, you know? he really does. The mm. thing about that, Phil, yes, you are right. Yes, you are right. Mm. I've seen him with his son when he's been, he was at training camp all last year after the games. Uh, I walked out one time. 
he drives a pickup truck, believe it or not. He was following, he was right behind me uh, leaving t- the, the game last game or not this game. So he is a big family man. Yes. Mm. And I know Giselle from all our reports didn't really want him to come back to play and all that. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it was so uncharacteristic of a guy mm. that every part of his day. Now I know somebody, I don't want to give away any names, but I know somebody that's inside the building. that really is, you know, is around Brady a lot. Every bit of his day is taken up. He is never seen, even in the hallway, like BSing with a teammate. That's wasted time. Everything is structured. Film work. This. If he has a second here, he's with Alex Guerrero, the trainer. He's there all the time. He's working on something. He's doing pliability. He's in film. When you see him out on the practice field, even if it's not his rep, he's working on his footwork. He's working on his footwork. He doesn't miss his step. So that's why, yes, he is a family man, but to mm. just all of a sudden just leave like that, yeah, that to me was very, very unusual, Phil. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can see your point there. I see your point there, but uh, yeah, I like Tim said, I'm glad he's back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so everybody yeah and, 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 and for Brady, with this break, whether it's planned longer or not, he earns everything he gets. Mm. He earns um, it all. Absolutely. And do you know what? One other thing that I have noticed in the preseason is, I hope I'm not going too fast here, but uh, is that Trask, if he's back, Trask has got another year to learn, you know. Yes, yes. And he has come a long way. And the thing about it is, is like, it's, it, it's really hard to judge, even on the preseason games, because it's not the real thing. The speed, all the players in 25 years or 30 years coming into they all said the same thing. Once you get to the regular season, oh my God, everything is amped up so much more. Once you get to the playoffs, and then as you go on to the conference championships, everything just, everything speeds up so much. He's not running with the ones. He's also not going against defensive coordinators that are game planning against him. And the only way you can find out is by being in there at that time. Mm-hmm. So, no, this has been a godsend for the, uh, the organization to find out what they what they have in track. Now, I'll tell you this, Bruce Arians, the other day when they were at the uh, joint practices with Tennessee and they had the media was right there. And I had a friend of mine who was talking to uh, Bruce Arians and Arians. Now, Arians Gabbard is his guy. Yes. Uh, I guess. Yes. Yes. But he was like, this is the best. And he knows Gabbard. This is the best Gabbard has ever been because he has been in this system for so long. Mm. And when you're in this system so long, everything comes second nature. You can use your physical ability. He's got a strong arm. So, I mean, Gabbard is still number two, even though I know there's a lot of, and especially down here in Florida, oh my God, there's so many Gator fans <laughs> that, you know, they think that, oh my God, oh, the glasses that you guys have on. So, I mean, but Clyde Christensen was pretty good in June when we got him at a mini camp and he kind of like, he's like, no, no, no. He goes, Gabbard is number two. We have to, they're all in for this year. So God forbid Brady goes down for a little bit. They're not going to like, all right, let's, you know, we got to really see what we got in trash. No, 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 no. Uh, Gabbard is going to be your mm. guy until Brady can go, come back. I mean, when well, Gabbard did play last season, he was a safe pair of hands. I mean, yeah, he didn't, uh, yeah. you know, uh, risk at all out there. I mean, he's definitely matured with Brady around him. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the joint practice of the Titans. We'll come back to talk about that titans Bucks game, but... You can't get off that easily, Rock. We want to find out more about you. This is your chance. Give us a plug for your podcast and tell us tell us oh, how that thanks, came man. about. Yeah, I, the, the podcast that I have is called The Rock Stops Here. And it's wherever you get podcasts. Just Google it. And it's basically, whether you're an athlete, coach, former coach, media person, you know, how did you make it to the top? How hard is it to stay at the top? What about when you're no longer at the top? That always interests me because for so many years I would, you know, it's not, everybody can, everybody can study now the all 22 X's and O's, but I really like the behind the scenes. So I enjoy doing that. So it's the rock stops here podcast. And then last year, and hopefully I'll get to do it again this year on joebucksfan.com. I did a bucks kickoff podcast and it was 24 hours before every Buccaneer game. So hopefully that is coming back. 
But that was crazy last year because with the COVID situation, I would tape my podcast on Friday night to give it to my guy so he would have it ready or maybe just do even 24 hours before. for And then it would be like, okay, Rashad Perryman tested positive. This player tested positive. You know what I mean? It was crazy. And then wasn't it funny once we got to the playoffs, there was no more testing in the NFL. Did you notice that? <laughs> nope, there was no more testing. They didn't want any stars <laughs> at all to be out. How that changed. <laughs> so who's been your favorite guests or both memorable guests? Um, I have had quite, quite a few. I think the manager in baseball of the Tampa Bay Rays, Joe Madden, mm. I went to his hometown. He's 68 years old. He's in, fa- he's got a great, uh, a great attitude about life. He was let go by the a- angels. He had been with them for 31 years as a player in the minor leagues. And then also as a coach. And then he finally was assistant coach. And then he finally got his uh, head coaching. They called a manager in baseball with the Tampa Bay Rays. So he turns the Rays around. He goes to Chicago. He wins the world series with the Cubs and then an opportunity with the angels. He's like told his agent, I want to finish out. Let me go back there. But he goes back there and he finds out that it wasn't the same. Sometimes that can happen in life. Like something that you really loved and was great in your past. Then you want to go back there. And then sometimes you go back and it's like, well, it's not the same. There was meddling from the owner. The GM was not on the same page. They let him go. They had a 12 game losing streak. He's like in baseball, you're going to have that. So I went to his hometown, uh, what he does with his foundation golf. I saw his family, his friends. He was so good to me. He brought me into his house. I thought I was just there doing a podcast. And he, he went and got the local hoagies, the local pizza for me to there. And then the all-star game was on. He's like, come back the next day. I want you to watch the game with you. And like, it just blew me away. And like, I, I left that trip and I, it was more than a podcast. I was just like, wow, look at how he is with family, how he gives back to his community. He's living back there at home. I was like, oh, I don't have many followers on Instagram. Oh, I'm worrying about this. And I'm like, what really, look at, look at what really matters. So I think something like that was probably one of my favorites because it made me realize what's really important. You know, sometimes mm. we get caught up in the, in the day-to-day rigmarole. That's Tim, a, that's probably a good segue into your question you had. Yeah, you, you mentioned in Sarog, you've been back in Tampa or down in Tampa for the last 20 odd years. It's been great over the last three, four years. Lightning, Bucks, obviously. The Rays making, making the final. What's it been like covering Tampa sports in those last three years compared to the 20 seasons or so before? Oh, my God. I mean, to be honest, when I did talk radio, when I took calls, and even on TV, I did a show at, a, a, it was a 10.30, and then we went to 11 o'clock at night, 18 years every night, and 14 years, we took calls. And, and on TV, usually you don't do that. We had a limo service. We, would, we, we had a barter system. It's a great way to get guests. I'll tell you a secret, man. This, this was unbelievable. If I go into the Bucks locker room, I'm like, hey, can you come on the TV show? When? Uh, oh, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Huh? Yeah, here's our address. Good luck. But when you say, I'll have a limo pick you up and take you right back. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we had a barter system where we gave them commercials and it was only for like two hours. It would get the guest to there. And it was a great way to get guests. But I also took calls. And when the years when it's really bad, and then the fans are just so mad, they want the coach fired. That would be like, honestly, when you're doing talk radio, you're like, okay, well, this is really good, actually, now. And that's kind of sad. You know what I mean? Because the phone lines are lit. People are ticked off and pissed off. And it was like, wow, you go from that to like now although it goes in cycles as as you know i remembered like oh my god i'd have one or two friends up in new england boston i'm like i can't stand you guys i'm over it you're winning at everything i can't stand you guys and now look at that you would be surprised some of the hate tampa bay oh they hate brady oh they hate it they hate the winner so it's been like it's been like night and day it's also night and day when you go and you try to do interviews compared to when it's losing and oh they don't want to you can imagine if you had a really bad day at your job and you really screwed something up 
And then you're walking out to your car and it's like, hey, what happened? Oh, how come you screwed up today? You know, I always, you know, think like that. You know, so it's been, it's like night and day, Champa Bay compared to some bad, bad long days. <laughs> Fantastic. The job is a lot easier when we're winning. So before we go on to talk about the tides, I've got a couple more questions. But so big plug, the rock stops here. That's right, isn't it? That's so it. Go the and rock that. stops here. And yep, while you're you. here, obviously, kick the like and the subscribe and do all of that stuff to us as well. Um, so we're huge fans of you. Just a couple of questions to sort of round off the talking about you bit. But obviously, you know, we know you're privy to lots of private information and we don't expect you to spill on the bucks, but we'd love for you to spill on on your profession and the way you work. What's like a secret or a thing that we don't appreciate as um, muggles or sort of you know, on the outside um, that we maybe don't understand about how you do your day job? I think and only be, no, no, look, I never bring it up because I only I played sports as an amateur in high school. I went to college in Florida, St. Leo College, a small school. I walked on as a pitcher, but I pitched and I pitched in local leagues here all the way till 50 year round. Then I played, you know, football only through in high school and then in basketball, but I did play and I realized, and I'll never forget when I first came down here and I was just on radio at first and I was pitching in an amateur league here and the league had an all-star team and was playing in a tournament down in Miami. And they said, hey, can you come down? I said, well, I got to do my radio here. And it was on a holiday, but I'm off on Monday, the holiday. If you guys advance, I'll be able to come down. So, okay, they won. They were winning. They're winning. Boom. Hey, we won. We're playing in the championship game. Great. It was down at the stadium where the uh, Memorials had played at the time. So I drove all the way down with my pickup truck. And I get down there. And these guys had played and they were winning to, for the championship game. And I get out there and this team was really, really good. They uh, had a couple of former pros. And so I was good the first inning. I was okay the second inning. And then the third inning, I gave up a run or two. And the fourth inning, I gave up like four or five runs, came out the team. And here this team had gone this far. And I was just so mad. And I was just like at myself. And we went out to the parking lot. And the guys cracked open a couple of beers and I had maybe one beer and I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm out of here. And I drove all the way back. It was like five hour drive. And I'm just, I was just like, and I thought, now what if I was a professional pitcher and somebody came up to me in the locker room, like right now, what happened? What happened with your stuff? You know? And I always would think back to that when I go into the locker rooms and if a guy screws up like Borgallus, the kicker, who missed the kick the other night. It's the first time we've been allowed back in. When you can't go in and it's only on Zoom or a press conference, they're not going to bring out a guy that's screwed up. And we all, and here it was again, it was like, oh, it was like five deep over at his locker. And he didn't even know he was getting dressed. He turned around and he had a good attitude about it. He kind of like grinned. And it was like, hey, what happened? I don't know, man. I just, I just missed it. Yeah, but you did so good in the first one. I don't have any excuses, da, da, da. but I'm just saying there's a way that's the one thing. And players will know that. I remember when I first came down here and we went into the race clubhouse and a pitcher had not done well. And for baseball, when a pitcher starts and he doesn't do good and he's pulled say in the fourth inning, they actually could go home, you know, and you want to really stick around, but you know what? Most of the time, they know the media wants to ask. So can you imagine that? They already had a terrible day. They're not going to be able to redeem themselves the next day because the starting pitcher is on a five rotation. So he can't get back in there to redeem himself for five more days. And then he's going to take a shower. And he's going to wait around for like two hours until the game is over. And then he's going to stand at his locker so the media can ask him some questions. But it's kind of like a professional courtesy. And I remember one day we went in there and one of the reporters goes, so, What's the matter with you? You know, what happened today? Your stuff wasn't working. And it's like, wow, you can't even snowball them. You know what I mean? Mm, so yeah, I, I, think, I think that's the biggest thing. And players will, and coaches, they will see that. You know what I mean? And yeah. if you just act professionally and normally,
more be be a good person, man. Mm. I think that's my thing. That goes a long way. That's a really good insight. And for yeah. poor Gollis, if you're going to miss, at least hit the upright like he did. Um, <laughs> at least do it in pre-season. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and then kind of introspectively then, before we move on to talk about the Bucks, that's all about sort of how you project and how you do externally. If you were in a time machine and you got out, out of the time machine next to young Rock Riley, just embarking on his career, what, what advice would you give yourself now? I would say you have to have confidence. You have to be prepared. That's the biggest thing. If you're going to do an interview, even if you're going to be a guest, I'm a guest on this. I wanted to make sure I saw Brashad Perryman. Okay, first time Brashad Perryman. He actually was out there today. Okay, Godwin was still running around. Evans, still no gauge. Like, and I'm just coming on here, but you want to have the, mm. the latest because if you're not prepared, you're going to be nervous. There's a lot of times where you do have to wing broadcast a lot, but it usually doesn't come out good. So I think that's the biggest thing, no matter what you're doing, even if it's a big interview, if it's whatever field you're in, be prepared. If you go in prepared, you're doing the best that you can and then be yourself. That's taken me a long time because a lot of times you'll see somebody that's doing what you want to do and you try to mimic yourself. No, you can't be them. You know what I mean? Be yourself. And the biggest thing of all, and that's what I found out doing the Rock Stops Here podcast with these people who are successful, and I already knew this, don't be a jerk. Be a good person because this business is already hard enough as it is. Everybody wants to get into it. So even if you're kind of talented and you know your stuff, if you're a jerk, nobody's going to want to deal with you. You know, nobody's going to deal with you to give you interviews. Nobody's going to want to give you any gigs. So that's the biggest thing. Be a good person. You obviously got to work hard and be prepared. That's a really good answer. Obviously, we won't yeah. tell everyone about the rider you had for coming on here. Um, it took us <laughs> ages to sort all those M&Ms out. Don't worry about that. But that's okay. Um, so now the real reason, of course, we're, we're all about the Bucks, and we're mad about the Bucks. You're about the Bucks. Let's come on, and we'll talk about uh, the Titans game. Uh, now, looking at the box score, we'll start with you, Rock, but we'll open it up into a, a bigger conversation. 13-3. I mean, are there any positives? Uh, um, for the guys that are trying to make the team, like some of the undrafted uh, wide receivers showed out, but they have so many wide receivers. Uh, you can see that Joe Tryon Shoyinka I think is going to really be something else. I like that. Um, it's kind of funny because when for preseason games, when Bruce Arians took over and it was there for all of his post-game press conferences, he would be like, you know, if they didn't, we damn we didn't win. You know, we didn't win. And I'm thinking like it's preseason. He was establishing the culture, whether it was a practice, whether it was a preseason mm -hmm. game, even though it doesn't count. I don't really get that now. I didn't get that from the my after the Miami game. Like they are so talented. They're a year and a two year removed from the Super Bowl. Look how far they went. It, the starters are not playing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and you know what? What was it? Two years ago, when there were no preseason games, it didn't seem to affect it too much. You know, coaches will say we need the preseason games. You got to get used to tackling. That's true, but but they didn't have it that year of the COVID. College football doesn't have any preseason games, and it doesn't seem to bother them. So the preseason games really drive me crazy, honestly. They, 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 they really do. It's for backups to see what they can do under the lights. Because Kyle Trask, you guys were up Kyle Trask. Mm -hmm. Trask, he did make a good point. He's like, even with the joint practices, it's not the same. Under the lights, plays are being called in your ear, you know. So it, you know, I guess that's good for preseason. But I even asked uh, Bowles after the first preseason game. I said, "All right, going to Tennessee. Are you guys going to do a little bit more game planning?" He goes, "We don't game plan. We don't game plan at all. They don't put, they don't study and and try to put in game plan. It's all about for the Dallas Cowboys 
mm. and being ready for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it more of a case that actually so much of the Bucks roster is already fixed? So, yes. you know, we haven't got lots of gaps that we nearly really need yes. to think about. Yes, yes. No, that's true. Because let me tell you, the years that I've covered terrible teams, it's like, oh, my God, the draft. Like, this guy's got to come right in and help. Or, like, let me give you an example in baseball with the Tampa Bay Rays. They've had so many injuries. I go to one game every series, and every time I go over there, it's like the locker room opens or the clubhouse. All right, who's oh, number 72? Who's he? <laughs> we go over to talk to him. There's been two times where the golf cart drives up. We're ready to go in pregame. And here comes a kid from AAA Durham with his, with his suitcase and he's coming in right there. So that's, you know, that, that's not the case with these Rays. David, you're right. They're so set. They're so talented with their stars. But the thing is with these injuries, we're going to get into it. Depth, that's where it could be a problem. Yeah, I think yeah. we're talking injury. You, you mentioned Trask. Obviously, he was sacked four times. Tim, you're good friends with uh, Ali Marpet. So how much could we use him right now? And injuries on the line. Um, what do you think the injuries are shaking up to, to have an effect? Uh, massively. And this is one of the problems with, for me, Brady's absence over the last 10, 12 days, whether it was set or not. He's got a brand new sender. Hardly any game time, practice time, whatever, with, with Hainsey. And the whole of the line, we, we are protecting the man who win us the Super Bowl. And that line does fill me with a bit of doubt, especially if Worst doesn't come back ready for day one and we've got to face Lawrence from Dallas without him. That might be a bit of a bit of a testing, testing moment. Yeah, Rock, I mean, the word on the street is forget about Jensen. So uh, it, yeah. it, it, does it feel like there's a panic button or? You know what? Yeah. It... You got to be honest. Tim, Tim is right. Tim, you, 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 you are right. I mean, Brady only needs one more second. I think it's like 2.5. They did this uh, chart and study where if he doesn't have the ability to just step and throw, now he gets rid of it really quick. He does a check down. I think it's only 17% completion rate. Like you got to protect him a little bit. And that's why, I know Phil, he deserved, you know, the family man, he deserved mm. to spend it. Yes. He knows the offense. Yes. His arm, father time has not hit it yet. I've watched every part. No. Yes. He's good. But I'm very surprised because Gedeke, he's a kid. He was in set, the left guard for now. He was at Central Michigan and he was a right tackle. Can you imagine? He's, he didn't play against big time competition. He was a tackle switching to guard. He hasn't even played in a game yet. They're going to come at him. That. And then on the other side, and then you've got the, like with the center, uh, Hainsey. I mean, it's a, it's worth it, It's a worry. That's the biggest part for me. That's the biggest mm, part yeah, for me indeed. right now, worrisome. And I think tight ends as well, their ability to block. And, you know, we lost Gronk and Evan Hour and, you know, so, and OJ Howard. There seemed to be far more blocking than he was actually receiving. Obviously, Cam Brake's done a lot, but he suffers with injury when he blocks a lot. So, um, you know, where's the extra protection coming from on that line? Yeah, I mean, they, they've got to figure it out. They've got to figure it out. They, they have to. And... You know, are they going to run the ball more? I don't know. Again, you can't. They're not game planning. They're not going to show anything on what they're planning on doing. Um, I'll tell you this, Leonard Fournette, I've watched him during practice, and I know the whole thing about putting on a weight. And, yeah, the offseason, he did let himself get up a little bit. But then he went to that, I won't call it a fat camp, but get in shape camp with some other NFL players. They were mostly wide receivers. And he took it to heart because he on Instagram, oh my God, he was getting killed. And so he, and he goes, come on, it's my genes and my family, man. We're all big, but no, he, he's fine. He looks fast. Rashad White looks like he has potential. He's been known to be a blocker in college to be able to pick up those blocks. But again, still a rookie. Gio Bernard has been out. Keyshawn Vaughn, hmm. Co'Keefe, late round pick, 
does have a lot of juice. He's got a lot of fire. He's been doing a good job blocking. I think Kate Otten it can block and catch out of the uh, you know out of formation. So I think he is going to be a good one. Kyle Rudolph, I don't know. Like his attitude, he's looked a little slow to me, and I got to see. So it's a good point, David. Where, where, you know, where's that going to come from? They got to figure it out. Mm. Oh, he's he's so many rushes. Sorry, go on, yeah, it's, it's that two seconds he needs, that split second. Yeah. That's all these guys have got to find. Yes. They've got mm. three or four seconds of sheer brutality. That's all we need off them every minute. I, th I think I think you'll see a lot of short passes this year, D uh, dumping the ball, moving the ball all the time, but not none of the long stuff. Because really, we've got to we've got to protect Brady. Else, you know, we we've had it, you know. And I'm, I am very. I seem to call on this program, this these podcasts every single year. Say about the offensive line, mm. the offensive line because you know sort of like keeps me awake at night, <laughs> even when it's all fit. But like, <laughs> now it's just it's just oh, next yeah. man up. Yeah, no. I mean, for the last couple of seasons, they used Godwin quite a lot on those short plays across the middle yeah. and even a bit of sort of running out of the backfield. But he's coming off quite a bit of an injury there. So mm. who else can support that role? Again, it's another unanswered question. At the well, I think maybe Julio Jones could actually really be, in reality, a tight end. I'll tell you what. Yeah. He has been the, 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 the nicest thing, the thing that, that stood out to me. Because, you know... We know the injury uh, history when with the ankle and plates in there. He's unbelievable. He has been unbelievable. No one can cover him. It's been like that even in the joint practices. He's lanky. He's got the moves. He's got the hands. He's loving it. Again, and you can say that about anybody. You know what I mean? He has to stay healthy. But I'm telling you what, he has looked fantastic, Julio Jones. So yeah. what about the other receivers that are sort of in the bubble at the minute? Um, Johnson had a good first game, didn't he, in pre-season? And he's been a little bit hit and miss, but uh, Brady seems to like him. But uh, who else do you see stepping up? Yeah, no, Tyler Johnson's good. And he's tall, you know what I mean? Uh, Tyler Johnson's done very, very well. Cyril Grayson, I was hoping to see a little bit more from him in camp. Really haven't. Scotty Miller can still go deep. He always says, you guys only think I can go deep. I can go in the slot. I can go over the middle, but um, he's done all right. He, he's done all right. And it's been some of these younger guys like this, Jared uh, Stearns, and yeah. uh, the like Tompkins, you know, and it's like, they're, they're all really, really good. This is the best receiving court that I've ever, I've ever covered. It's incredible. Um, so that's the thing. I think they are still going to make a move to bring in, even if they got to make a trade or whatever, to bring in an offensive lineman there. I, I still think that they're going to do that. You can't go in to this season, hoping gadecki has got it or, you know, who's behind him. You, you, you can't. So you have a surplus of wide receivers. I know it's 17 games. I know they got to go to Germany. I know there's been a lot of injuries. You might see one of those guys move, but the wide receivers have all looked really, really good. It was funny. The first joint practice against the Miami Dolphins on that first day, the Dolphins couldn't even, couldn't even cover them. Now the second day, the Dolphins had a little bit better day, but they're, they just have so many talented wide receivers. They, they all look, they all look really, really good. But as David so says, there's only so many receivers we can carry. The more we carry, the less room there is for tight ends and running backs. Right. So it, it's right. A, it's a tight bubble, isn't it? No, it it it, it no, it is. It is. It's mm. it's actually a good. It's a good thing to have when you have that many talented guys. It's actually a good thing. So let's look at it like that. It'll be a nerve-wracking week for some of those guys on the bubble. It's going to be tense for them. There's going to be. Some, I I. To be honest, I'll throw one in here. I don't think Scotty Miller will make the team. You might be right. No, no. Mm -hmm. You honestly, when you break when you break it down, because I was starting going in, I was like, no, nah, you got Miller. You know what? I don't think Tyler Johnson. And then not only in the games, I'm watching what Tyler Johnson's doing in practice. He's constantly getting open, open, great moves. He hasn't dropped anything. 
he's he, he's clutch and i'm like and he's a lot taller he's a lot taller mm. i mean i know size shouldn't matter and i forgot which one of you guys at a good point i, I you know with arians i think it's going to be tweaked a little bit that risk it no biscuit i've seen a lot more underneath stuff in practice this whole preseason than i have when arians was there i don't know if it's not now b- believe me if 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 uh, Brady sees a one-on-one and he knows he's going to go, he's going to go again. You got to give him time, but just starting off the season, I don't know if you need that deep threat as much like a Scotty Miller. So that's that you might be right there. So you mentioned before about perhaps getting another offensive lineman in. We've still got 9 million cap space. Do you think we'll make another splash before season starts? I do. I think that because Brady, this is probably it. So they got him regardless. You know, he's got $385 million sitting right there to do Fox. His wife didn't want him to play. Is he going to go through this next year? This is probably it. This is it. So you're all in. And what do you need right now? Protection for Brady. Bad, bad. So that's where I, yes, I see them. I, they got to. You don't think that, and this, that he might, if we could, Gron- he might talk Gronk into coming back. You know what? You know what? I have been watching the, the Gronk situation. I follow him on everything. The thing about with Gronk, now, he has said, no, I'm done. I'm more beat up. Yeah, I got all these other things. He, he's, he's always in demand, whether it's products, commercials, parties. Everyone loves Gronk. That eventually... That eventually gets a little bit tiring. And the thing about it is the first time that he retired and his girlfriend, Camille, even admitted that. And there was also, I don't want to get too deep in stories here, but when he was in Miami, the first time that he retired, I know someone that his wife was going to one of these um, yoga classes and she came back to her husband who covers the Miami Dolphins. And she said, honey, he goes, how was class? She goes, oh, we had this big guy. He was like a football player. He was kind of stiff. <laughs> and she, he's like, and he was in the class, yoga class with all women. And he goes, do you know who he was? She goes, oh, I don't know. I don't know. She goes, oh, you know what? He took a picture with us. And she showed, he goes, that's Gronkowski. <laughs> Bob Gronkowski. His back his joints, he was so beat up that he took a lot of that bulk off. And he, he said he was feeling really, really good. He didn't know if he was going to come back. And then when Brady started talking to him and you should come to Tampa and it's totally different than Belichick and it's good down here. You got to come, you got to come. All right. But I got to put that more, that bulk on. Well, this time when he retired, he was in a basketball game Ice Cube has got this big three. It was in Tampa last weekend. Gronk is a really good athlete. He was playing. He's in, he's staying in really good shape. And he also still has the muscles. Like he didn't take it way off like he did last time. So there is that. But Phil, I I don't want to, you know, he said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But you never say never, Phil. Well, it's like this. We've got all these offensive linemen missing. And he, tra- and, you know, Gronk did a lot of blocking last year. He could be ringing him. He could have had all that time off, but, but with Gronkowski, you're going to have to come back because, you know, I need you. I need us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quickly look at the other side of the ball. I think yes. the roster probably shakes down a little bit more easier uh, on the defensive side of the ball, just because there, there are fewer players across more positions. But Rock kind of, obviously, top bowls is the coordinator. He still seems to be calling the plays. He's still going to be hands-on. Yes. What, what do we expect from the D this year, do you think? Yeah, that's what's great is because when the Miami Dolphins coach here, he's a real, he's got a great sense of humor. When you look at him, you're like, he looks like a kid. He's a little guy, McDaniel. But he was, somebody asked him, oh, you know, you, you, you have a new offensive coordinator. How about, wouldn't it be great to be able to have a, a system that you already have in place? And he goes, that's a luxury. If you have a system that's already in place, That's you're so far ahead of the game. That's the biggest thing for both sides of the ball. 
the offense, it's all the same terminology. It's the same, might be tweaked a little bit. Same thing with the defense. Antoine Winfield was talking the other day and he's like, we're no longer just young. And, and I think it was also, it was either Jamel Dean or Carlton Davis saying that we know this system so well, it hasn't changed. We're also older now. So there really is no excuses, especially with the past defense. I think that's huge, having the same system. And Bowles even said that because we asked Bowles, what's the biggest difference when you were a head coach with the Jets and you're a head coach now? He goes, number one, I'm going to do it my way. When I was with the Jets, you first get that gig. You're listening to this. So I got to listen to him. No, I'm in charge. I'm going to do it. But I'm already in the building three years. I've already been in the system three years. I know these players. So it's really not that big of a thing when you come Mm -hmm. in. So the fact that they know the system, that's huge. Now, on defense, as you guys know, it starts up front. Vita, oh my God, if he he could stay healthy, you can't, you should see him on some of the one-on-ones when they have the joint practices or two. They, they, they They can't block him. They can't stop him. They can't, they can't. So Vita Vea, Akeem Hicks, I think that's a huge addition. Another big man, loves being on the side of Vita Vea. Golston looks fantastic as well. Then you got Shaq Barrett here. You got Joe Tryon, Shoyinka here. You got Levante David and Devin White here. When we go back here, okay, I'm not here to just pump it off like it's a big PR thing. Sean Murphy Bunting, you better you, you better start stepping it up. You know what I mean? Jamel Dean, boom. Carlton Davis has looked good. Anton Winfield has looked good. And Logan Ryan has been a nice addition because he's a veteran. And they're saying that, wow, like his mental aptitude for the game has really been good. So again, you know, it's basic. It all comes down to injuries. We'll see. But there really should be no excuses, man, at all Go, going in. I mean, you You're picked right. up. Come, come. So certainly the secondary, when Brady first came that first year, you could tell they were struggling with communication a lot, and that's where we tend to get burnt. And you say that's what they really need to pick up and keep building on that. And and that's what they told me. That's what they told me. I've, I've gotten some of those guys, defensive backs alone. They all said the same thing. That's what Bowles preaches. Everybody knows the system. You guys are talented enough communication communicate and they've been working on that so that's it you hit it on the head david the, the other thing for the defensive backfield i'll say this is if you pressure up front your backfield looks good hmm. that's it that's it and sometimes you know maybe the one thing that i could say is like you know maybe you don't have to bring the house all the time because then you expose hmm. the back with so many blitzes I don't know if they're going to continue to do that. Bulls loves to do that, but then you, you know, you're, you're going to expose some people. So, you know, we'll see. So we've got one more preseason game. Um, Indiana, Indianapolis, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, are we going to see anything? Is there any point in this game or is this just footage for third stringers? No, I, and especially with the injuries with all these guys going down now, you know, and it's not only Bowles. I've heard some other coaches. I remember, I'm trying to think of who it was. Oh, maybe it was Sala from the Jets going into this last preseason game. And like, are you going to play the starters? Are they going to play a, a series or a quarter? And he's like, you know what? Every single night when I go to bed, it changes. And Bowles said the same thing. Like, um, but I want to get the starters a little bit of that rust off and play. And then the next night, like, no, but what if we're going to go down with another injury? That's the biggest thing. I don't think, and because it's the same system, I don't think you're going to see hardly any starters play in this game Saturday night. I, just, I, I don't, honestly. Brilliant. So thank you. Just to wrap up then, um, Phil and David, if we just cover off our club news. So if you're in the UK and you've just been watching this because you've been following Rock and you're like, what is this all about? Go to bucksuk.org, click on join. We are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers UK fan club. We've been going a long while now. We've got lots of members and and Phil, there's lots of uh, things happening for those members to do in terms of the competitions this year. 
Yes, we've got to. Uh, we start, we launch our prediction competition tomorrow, which we've got a, a really nice sign, uh, Shaq Barrett uh, shirt. Uh, we've got we've got some of the best competition prizes this year. A really nice sign print by Mike Evans and oh, just a host of stuff. A host About of 40 stuff. prize competitions every year. Every week, there's a couple mm. that run across weeks. We've got, I think I've lost count now. Is it five fancy football leagues running? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and David, it's not just about the prizes. There's also the social side. Um, we're a tiny little island rock, but it's still hard to get together and meet up to watch the games when they kick off at one in the morning. So, so David, what are we doing to meet up this year? Yeah, so we've got um, three game watch meets during the first half of the season. So week two for the Saints game, we're meeting up in Leeds. So um, same venue we had last year, which was crazy. <laughs> um, week five for the uh, Saints game, we're in London. And then week nine for the Rams game, which is a late game for us, 9.25 starts. So that's in a pub with a lock-in. We've got it all organised. Um, so yeah, the last meet up in Birmingham. So three games where actually... We, everyone can get together around the country, come and watch and share the Bucks live as a group. So again, those are ticketed events. It's really important you go on our forum on our website, bucksuk.org, and get your tickets for those in advance. Rock, will we be seeing you in Munich? I wish. Oh, I wish. Oh, no, go on, I wish, you I wish, will. Go I wish. on. Listen, I, you guys are the best, man. You're the best fan group. I just love your vibe. I do. I do. I do. I wish I could be there. You guys are the best. Thank you. That's, That's really kind. Great. We will be shouting extra loud for you then. We will we will bring bring the spirit of the rock to it's a, uh, it's a the Lions Arena. Because <laughs> it's a shame you can't come to, to Munich. You will just see how the Bucks UK can party there. Oh. Well, <laughs> if, if you came to <laughs> Munich, you can remember coming to Munich. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have, well, if you remember Munich, you'll do well. You know. yeah. <laughs> I don't think we can let you leave without asking what's your prediction for the season then. You know what? You're the first. You guys are the first guys that have actually asked me because uh, 17 games. Let's just say I see the Buccaneers winning. Mm, I was going to say 11. Should I say 12? Somewhere between there, and with the goat and, he, and the way he takes care of himself, and even if he gets injured, we don't know. The year that he had the, the need and all year that he had it. Tristan Wirfs, when we talked to Tristan Wirfs, oh, you got to go back. What is it? He goes, here's the thing I learned. Recovery from injuries because we all have injuries. When Brady is injured, you guys would never know it and how he takes care of his body. So Brady's going to be there. I'm confident about that. Let's go with 12 wins, man. Let's go with 12 wins and see how we go in the playoffs. That's what 12 I 12 is enough to roll the dice. We like that. And hopefully with an easy division. And David, yeah. it's a really good point. We've got a member survey live that's closing any day now. We're polling all of our members to ask them game by game how they think the season's going to go. And next week's podcast, we're going to do the first half of the season to see how you, the members, uh, feel the season's going to go. So we'll, uh, we'll get the consensus. The wisdom of the crowd, I think they call it. Nice, nice. So, Rock, thank you so much for joining us. David, oh. Phil, Tim, it's been a blast. Yeah. Thank you. That's been fantastic. Great Thanks, to have Rock. You on, Rock. Thank you, Rock. Rock. Thanks very Fox much. Fox UK indeed. rules. Fox thank UK you. Rules. Thank you. Thank and, you. and we'll end, as we always do, with a, with a hearty go Bucks. Go Bucks! Go Bucks! Go Bucks! <laughs>